I am president of Maryland Shale Issue. It's, uh, we represent, safely to say, tens of thousands of Maryland uh, firearm owners. We uh, obviously have Shale Issue as a chief component of our mission, but this is a very near and dear issue for many of our members. Uh, Senator Brosh, you had some questions earlier about uh, NFA in particular, so I'd be happy to address that when you have that question later on. I'm not saying my prepared remarks. What I wanted to do was try to dispel a couple of issues that we're facing today. Um, for one thing, the main, we would like to stand here actually as proponents of this bill, to be honest with you. The, the chief issues that we have is we draw a line to what we consider to be violations of civil rights. Now, this is, now I'm going to be very clear. The Supreme Court said that, and it's not often I get to actually rebut an attorney general, but what the Supreme Court actually said was that firearms in common use are actually protected. Individuals, all lawful individuals, have a right to firearms in using them in their individual self-defense, most acutely in the home. Common use. The AR-15 rifle is the most commonly sold rifle in the United States of America. One of the reasons it is, I'm a former, I'm a, I'm a veteran. One of the reasons it is, as many veterans will use it, because ergonomically speaking and aesthetically, we're familiar with the controls. Although this is nothing like we actually use in the military. The other thing is, it, it's been called the Barbie of guns or the Lego of guns. But basically what it does is, the reason why it is so popular, the reason why you'll see a registered nurse get it, or a, or a house mother, or uh, of a six foot tall man, largely has to do with the fact that it can be adjustable by the individual by themselves. I don't have to hire a gunsmith to actually modify this thing to make it actually fit. So when we talk about what Maryland is wants to call an assault weapon, assault weapons are fully automatic. These are not. They're essentially going to be hunting rifles, and the cartridge we're using are actually fairly small. One of the things that we have an object, one of the re reasons you're hearing so much objection to an assault weapon ban is functionality-wise, it equals the things that you are not banning. So from an ergonomic standpoint, the pistol grip, the thumb pull stock, the things that ergonomically help people use these firearms, they're not actually changing the lethality of the instrument. What changes the lethality of the instrument is the person behind it. So that is one of the things we look at from this legislation that concerns us. We've gone through this legislation multiple times. And in terms of penalties, we see penalties being assessed against lawful people, but we don't see actual penalties primarily assessed against the people who are doing the crime. In Baltimore, 213 murders. We can see the vast majority of these actually are coming from people who have been recidivists and their SA. Essentially, people that shouldn't be accessing firearms. We're giving them. Mayor Rollins Blake herself will tell you, and she has on her webpage, very specific instances of catch and release of people who are caught illegally with firearms. Violent, violent people released in five days later committing violent crime. <coughs> Those are the people we need to target. These laws are targeting lawful people. You're going to do nothing but convert lawful people into criminals. These misdemeanor penalties that are in this bill, two years or more, will make them pro. We'll, we'll give them a lifetime prohibition on firearm ownership. We'll deny them a security clearance. They'll never pass around, they'll never pass a background investigation for a bank. Senator, thank you very much for your time. I'll take any questions people have.